Hello, I'm Colette Davenport. I am a private metaphysician for public figures on a spiritual journey. In today's lecture, I'm going to be sharing the high level introduction to my metaphysical model. Now, as I'm going through this, you might have some questions or if it's stimulating some deep curiosity in you, then I invite you to check out my website, colettedavenport.com, where you can see more information, um, who I work with and how I work. And then if you find that doesn't perfectly pinpoint resonate with you, that's okay. You're still welcome to reach out to me and let's see what kind of magic we can make together. All right. So I'm going to share my screen with you and we're going to take a look at this slideshow. Let's see, share, share. There it is. All right. Uh, for the metaphysical model. Now, before I get into it, I just want to say this model is something that while I've created it to convey to you, it's actually a distillation of decades of self-inquiry and devouring all of the spiritual uh, books and, and following uh, other wise teachers and things of this nature, but translating all of that information in addition to the divine, the direct downloads that I have received um, uh, as I've made myself, you know, an open channel for this self-inquiry, for this information to truly understand what is the nature of reality. And why I've done this is because like most of us, I've had a lot of challenges, a lot of life setbacks, a lot of um, things to overcome. And, and while I have done that in a traditional way of hard work, no, you know, keep your head down and just fucking work, I've also realized that that's not the only way that we don't have to work ourselves to the bone in order to achieve some level of success. Now, I'll say additionally that I am typically speaking to those who are on this soul journey, right? This journey maybe to soulmate love or to self dis ultimate self-discovery, but this model will apply in a more practical and pragmatic way as well. So if you're in leadership, for example, you can utilize this model to be more effective with the people that you're leading and the level of um leadership and guidance that you're providing. So in other words, this model is absolutely universal. So as I'm speaking to my friends who are looking for love, um, just know that you can translate that into what's applicable for you. Okay. All right, let's get started, shall we? So zooming out, this model has this fundamental structure where pure consciousness is the ultimate reality. And from that infinite, eternal, indescribable, quite frankly, reality, then personal consciousness so is, is sort of created, is imagined, is a localization of that infinite consciousness. Okay, so then from personal consciousness, or what I tend to call the soul, from that personal consciousness, our personality is imagined, is formed, comes into form through that imagining of the personal consciousness. So in this case, personality, and I'm going to get into more detail, so if you're like taking frantic notes, chill out <laughs> because I will expand on each one of these in detail shortly. But your personality is consistent of your mind body complex. It's what you consider yourself to be. All right. And then from personality, from the you you think you are, then your personal reality is experienced. Okay. So pure consciousness localizes itself into personal consciousness, which localizes itself into your personality, which then projects itself into your personal reality. 
you can see I've written identity there. If you if you prefer um, to relate to that personality as your identity, that's the same thing here. It's synonymous. Okay. So expanding on this model, there are seven levels of creation. Isn't it interesting? There are seven levels of creation. There are seven days in the week. There are seven chakras, right? The whole divine number seven. <laughs> it's not a mistake, y'all. It's 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 on purpose. So the seven levels of, of creation that uh, correlate with the model, uh, metaphysical model of reality from pure consciousness. This is known as the I, the infinite I. Maybe you call it God. Okay. And then personal consciousness is I am. So remember, this is the first manifestation from infinite, um, in, um, indescribable <laughs> God state, or if you want to call that the quantum field, if you're more science minded, you can call pure consciousness the quantum field. But then from that infinite field, there is a manifestation a localization of that quanta into the soul, personal consciousness. It's something that every single one of us on the planet claim as the truth. It's the only truth. I am. It's the only truth each of us can claim about ourselves. We all know it. It is not debatable. <laughs> I am, right? And we all share that. So, We'll talk more about the sharing of the I amness here in a minute. Uh, but from there, then the next level of creation is the personality. And I just put my name in there, right? I am Colette. It would be, you, I am your name, for example. Okay. And then these, um, these other levels of creation all stem from our personal reality. Or let me say that differently. All make up the other way around, all make up our personal reality. So our core beliefs, our thoughts, our emotions, and our actions, all of that constitutes our personal reality. All right. And then there's something called, I call anyway, the veil. Okay. This veil is a mechanism. Give me just a sec. <clears throat> Thank you. This veil is the mechanism by which consciousness veils its all knowingness <laughs> so that it can experience itself through you, through me, through the personality. Okay. That veil um, is the masking of the all knowing so that the all knowing can experience itself. It's multiplicity and diversity, all of its facets, right? It can't know all of its facets. It can't rather experience all of its infinite facets in its state of consciousness, in that pure or even the personal consciousness state, because it is lacking any form, okay? Any form by which to perceive itself. Okay, it's just a field of knowingness. <laughs> so this veil um, is what allows that field of knowingness to to sort of become um, to to come into form. We'll say it like that: to come into form so that it can perceive all that it is. Okay. So that's, we're going to get way deep into that because my entire body of work as a metaphysician is focused primarily on locating and liberating your unique veiling mechanism, which I'll talk more about here shortly. So to further contextualize this, the personality, which is below the level of the veil, right, but it's, it's, it's underneath the veil. Um, and as you can see, every that veil is, think of that as like a dividing line. Everything below it is what is typically known to us, as in, I know my body and mind. I know me. This is me, my personality, and the world, and which is not me. So that would include you, other people. So other people and the world. And 
this beneath the level of the veil, this is the um, the, the world of illusion, and I'm not going to get too far into that. But it's it 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 is not what it appears. Okay, it appears separate, solid, and quite frankly, hard to change. But that's the fundamental limiting belief. We believe we are solid, separate, and hard to change. We believe we are this body-mind complex, this personality, this meanness. We believe I am me and you are you and the world is the world and it's all solid and it's all separate and it's all hard to change. Okay, so that's the fundamental um, limiting belief, the fundamental outcome, if you will, of the veil. And it's 100% on purpose. Now, above the veil, right, when we lift the veil and we see the full picture, we also see our divinity. Now, it's not as simple as what I just said. <laughs> uh, in fact, it takes a lot of people decades and lots of dollars and lots of trips to Peru sometimes or other ways, other methods for um, knowing thyself, right? Knowing your divinity, knowing your infinite nature, knowing who you really are. Um, but once you do, and I'll talk about a much easier way here shortly, once you do know your divinity, then you can see the full picture. You can see essentially through the eyes of God, which, holy shit, that is the whole reason why we're here, to expand beyond the limits of our mind and body and world and see more clearly our true nature and the nature of reality, okay? I like to say, discover your divinity. That's the way I like to language it. You might have different words for it. Um, but then we can also see the veil for what it is and not, you know, try to try to try to kill it, like try to kill the ego or this or that. Like we just don't even have to go all that angry effort direction. We can um, simply see more clearly the nature of reality and who we are within that reality. OK. Now. <laughs> There are also, I find a lot of times in my work with my clients who are looking for love, they typically very highly successful men, but women as well, looking for love, looking for that soulmate love, looking for like true partnership. And a lot of times that desire um, is more of a, it's expressed more like a need of the ego rather than a desire of the soul, right? So above the veil, the soul, it only desires to express itself. And what is itself? It's love, right? It's love, it's joy, it's peace, it's pleasure, it's ecstasy. It just is. This is the nature of reality, the nature of pure consciousness, the nature of God, right, is love, essentially. So when the soul desires it simply desires to express itself fully, okay, in human form. That's the whole point of having a body is to express that infinite nature, that love that we are through the physical body. <laughs> but when we aren't aware of that veiling mechanism and we're living beneath that veil, we're living in 100% in the illusion identified as our personality, as our body mind, which again, is so solid, separate and hard to change according to that um, interpretation of reality. Um, it's a limiting belief, remember, but as long as we're doing that, then instead of expressing ourself our soul lovingly, we've got an ego that's got needs. Okay. So the needs of the ego and the ego, by the way, is just that aspect of our humanity that is fearing being alone and death and seeking security, safety, and significance. Okay. So that's the whole point and purpose of the ego 
it's it doesn't want to just it doesn't want to be alone and doesn't want to die and it wants to feel significant and safe okay so it's it's a wonderful aspect of humanity but as long as it's in the driver's seat then it is always needing to be safe needing to be significant, which translates in, in relationship, needing to be approved of, needing to be loved. I use quote fingers because what we think love is when it comes from the need, the ego's needs isn't actually love. It's, um, it's more about being significant, being approved of, being valued, which these are not bad things. They're just limited by nature okay so there the distinction is above the veil at the level of your divinity your soul simply desires to express love express and experience love beneath the veil right we've got we're living in the land of limitation y'all limiting beliefs and ego needs and no matter how accommodating people are in relationship or in business or whatever it may be, no matter how accommodating people are, they can't be counted on, right? They could die. And now what? Now we don't have anybody to validate us, to value us, to approve of us, right? To make us feel significant. So we beneath the veil, we're simply fucked. Okay, and so what there is to do <laughs> is realize it's just two different ways of seeing yourself and the world. Okay, beneath the veil, as I just described, with all of its limiting beliefs and its ego needs, this is the conventional model. This is the conventional model of reality that we're all conditioned um, to live within. Okay, no one's questioning it, <laughs> questioning it. I mean, except for me and some others, right? But primarily, we're all just staying in the status quo of this conventional model of reality. Which is why I'm teaching this lecture, offering this lecture to you about the metaphysical model of reality, which includes everything that I just described but goes beyond that to also see self as source, as infinite, right? As pure consciousness that is localized into the individual for the purpose of expressing and experiencing our infinite nature. Okay. And so we, I'm calling it the metaphysical model because I like that phrase you might call it um, a spiritual model or again if you're more science-minded go ahead and call it the quantum model um, all of it is synonymous um, from where I stand okay but you might have a preference for how the language that you're using um, and so use it all right let's let's talk more about the veil <laughs> Hopefully that looks the way I've done it, the way I've created this slide. Hopefully it looks kind of 3D, like what? Can I even see? What is it? I can't really tell. <laughs> um, the veil exists between personal consciousness, or I am, as it's stated here, and your personality. I am Colette, right? So from that I am, that infinite I am, from the unconditioned consciousness to the localized um, qual qualified formed entity known as Colette or in your case you okay and this veil again is the mechanism that allows consciousness to express and experience itself in the world of form okay so it is perfectly divinely designed. Um, it's nothing to be afraid of or angry at or a victim to. Talk more about that in a second. Um, it's so perfect. It's just, it's divine. Okay. And so <clears throat> again, my body of work is based on 
like lifting the veil, right? First, we got to see there is a veil so that we can lift the veil and be liberated and experience our true nature. And our true nature, again, is pure love. It's joy. It's sustained inner peace, these kinds of things. Now, that doesn't mean we're just living on a, like, cloud somewhere, never experiencing challenges. We do experience the challenges. We just know how to um, overcome them without going to war with ourselves or other people. Okay. So the veil, the veiling mechanism, I call your soul wound. Okay. And again, it lives between consciousness and personality. It's right there in between your unconditioned self or soul and your ego self or personality. And the soul wound is a fundamental misunderstanding of who you are. Okay. It is specific, unique, and cruel. Okay. That's just how, that's just, that's just its makeup. Okay. Otherwise, it's not effective. So here's some examples of clients of mine that I've done the deeper work with. And we have located and liberated their soul wound. So just a reminder, these are highly successful, very powerful public figures that have uncovered this this mechanism, this soul wound that lies beyond their level of self-understanding. In other words, if you're trying to use your ego to understand this, You're not going to get very far. You actually have to go beyond that level of self-understanding, which is why I'm a private metaphysician. Meta means beyond, beyond the physical, beyond the known, into that quantum field, into the soul, okay, into the essence. And this is where the soul wound lives. So here's some examples. (laughs) See if any of this resonates with you. I am a disappointing reject, unworthy of unconditional love. I am a nobody, an ugly, boring loser that deserves to be alone. I am delusional. I'm fraudulent. I'm a small man that is incapable of measuring up. (sighs) Now, imagine if we, and remember, it's specific, unique, and cruel, but it's specific like your own fingerprint. So these might, these might sound like they might be triggering something inside of you, and they may be similar, but yours is unique to you. And the wording of your soul wound is the key to liberating it, okay? So coming back to... Um, this distinction between soul desires and ego needs. The soul desires what? Expression and the experience of its infinite nature, which is love. Okay. The ego needs to be safe and significant, right? It it does, and it fears like being alone and dying. <laughs> it fears death and and being alone. And so As long as you are living, let me say this differently. If you don't know your soul wound, you are absolutely living beneath the veil, okay? In the illusion, as it were. You think you're your body. You think you're separate. You think love is somewhere out there. You think money is something to earn and acquire and status is you got to work hard and sacrifice in order to get it. All of that is the reality beneath the veil, otherwise known as the illusion, right? And the ego is in the driver's seat. Now, if we work together and we locate or diagnose your soul wound, then you can start to see it for what it is. You can see it in action. You can see it starting to sabotage shit and stop it, right? And we don't stop it with this hateful, angry, like a mob that's coming to get it. (laughs) No, we actually 
stop the effects of the soul wound with love and acceptance, right? Through our divinity, by rising in consciousness to our our highest state of being, okay? And from there, we can then, um, again, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. So let me just pause that. I'll circle back and we'll get to this next slide. All right, so <laughs> when we are living beneath the veil, when we're living from ego, to put it simply, um, a problem can arise in the body mind, right? I have a problem or I'm experiencing a problem in the world. But that comes from that sense of separateness and that sense of lack, right, of the ego. It fears being alone. It seeks certainty and security because it believes in separation and lack, okay? And so then we go with the, what we do is to fix the problem is we go to our beliefs. We go to all of this um, stuff that we think we can address in our personal reality. In fact, if you think about it, there are tons of programs and coaches and methods to address things like your limiting core beliefs. Things, there's all the mindset stuff that addresses your negative thoughts. There is emotional, there is emotional intelligence, um, books and programs. I, I mean, I wrote a book on emotional intelligence several years back because that was the level of understanding that I had for what was at play in the world of challenge. In, in other words, when we were experiencing personal challenges or crises, that was the level that I knew to go to, to address, to overcome them. Well, and then, of course, there's all the actions, the actions plan for this, the blueprint for that, the four step method for this, that and the other. There's all of that. But as you can see here, all of these attempts at fixing the problem um, are all beneath the level of the veil. Which means you can change some some shit in your personal reality. You can make changes to your body, your physical body. You can make changes to your relationship. You can make changes to your bank account. You can make changes to your work environment. You can make changes um, beneath the veil. Of course you can, because this is all, these are levels of creation. Notice they're at the bottom, not at the top of this ladder and levels of creation. So it's it's harder, more dense, more efforting work to make these changes. And by the way, they're only change you're only making changes to the illusion. Okay. In other words, and again, the illusion doesn't mean it's not real. It's just not what it appears to be. It's just a limited perspective of the ultimate reality. So you're making changes to something that isn't even the ultimate reality, okay? So what is there to do? <laughs> well, as we rise up, we go up this ladder and the levels of creation and we go above the veil, we see more clearly who we are. We know ourselves as our divinity, as this consciousness, that has localized into the body mind and projected into our our personal reality but from this level of seeing from this level of consciousness we have choice we can consciously choose what we want to experience who we want to be and how we want to express and experience in the physical body, in the physical world, in our business, in our relationship, in our money-making endeavors, right? From this conscious choice, we are creating with power. <laughs> We're cooking with gas, as they say. Um, we actually have the ability to choose from that quantum field of possibilities, rather than the pool of limited potential that exists beneath the veil, 
Okay. So above the veil, we have choice. Um, let me just qualify that. We have the choice on from a from from a from the infinite pool of possibilities. Let me just put it that way. Okay. Above the veil, we have the choice from the infinite pool of possibilities. Beneath the veil, we're fixing problems, which is like just moving pieces around on the checkerboard instead of recognizing we created the checkerboard and all of the pieces and we are the player and we are the opponent and we are the allness that is experiencing the entirety of it. Okay. <laughs> so let's keep moving. So what there is to do in order to rise above the veil and become this awakened soul. So let me just say the, 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 the veil doesn't go away. The veil remains. It is a mechanism of humanity. Okay. Um, it will always be there, but when you awaken to your true nature, your infinite nature, your divinity, when you are an awakened soul, you're no longer, a, you know, walking around with a soul wound in the driver's seat of your experience. When you are an awakened soul, you see reality as it is, okay? Which, yes, includes the physical body, includes other people, includes the whole wide world, okay? But we know that there is only ultimately pure consciousness that we are all a part of, all emanating from, okay? And so an awakened soul is a fundamental understanding of who you are. How simple is that? It's like the flip side <laughs> to your soul wound. And so if the soul wound is specific, unique, and cruel, the awakened soul is simply an expression, a knowing, and a loving, and an expressing of you in the world. Okay. So it takes you, in fact, it took these clients from their soul wound. I'm a disappointing reject, unworthy of unconditional love to I'm perfectly imperfect and loved for being my whole self. Okay. I've got a couple more examples for you here. This client went from, I'm a nobody, an ugly, boring loser that deserves to be alone to I'm a magnetic man who creates authentic connection easily. And this client went from I'm a delusional, fraudulent, small man that is incapable of measuring up to I'm a clear-headed, honest powerhouse of a man who is loved just as I am. So, this, like I said, is a high level introduction to the metaphysical model. And I hope that you saw the, the, the zoomed out version. So pure consciousness, personal consciousness, personality, and personal reality are the basics. But we tend to um, contract ourselves into, in the conventional model, we tend to contract ourselves and confine ourselves to just what we perceive as our personality and our personal reality, which is full of limitations because it's based on the belief or the, 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 mm, the construct that we are separate, solid, and hard to change. So anytime a problem arises, for us, then we go to fix it by taking some sort of action, or if we're a little bit more evolved, we're using our um, emotional intelligence tools or our mindset tools, or if we're like even more evolved, we're digging into those core foundational beliefs. And we think when we find them that that will really give us some relief and help us solve our problems. And it will, it absolutely will, but it will never liberate us at a soul level. So the reason I share this is because the majority of my clients find their way to me when they're looking for soul mate love. And so I say to you, if that's you, um, in order to have soulmate love, you have to liberate your soul. 
And this metaphysical model and my and my work as a private metaphysician does exactly that. In other words, if you want soulmate love, um, you cannot any longer see yourself as this, um, as your personality, right? Solid, separate, and hard to change. You can't see other people like that. You can't see love or your your partner as something separate and far away that you have to earn their love or become someone to who deserves their love. You just, you, you just can't and vice versa. They, you can't see them as someone um, who needs to live up to your expectations and this and that. So that's all conventional approaches to love and relationship. And remember when I said it's like quote finger love because it's not actually love. Love can only be by definition unconditional which means it's above the veil, right? Love is unconditional because it is the nature of reality. It is it's our essential nature, okay? So when we're beneath the veil, when we're confined to our personality and the soul wound is in the driver's seat and we're living from our ego's needs, then um, we're not actually in love. We are seeking approval, and as long as the other person is approving of us or quote unquote loving us, meaning we feel safe with them, um, we feel we no longer feel alone. So we're not seeking that. And as long as they're providing us with what we need at an ego level, then we perceive it as love. But as soon as they take their attention off of us, um, because, you know, we're multifaceted beings and that happens, we experience a loss or a lack of love. I should say the ego does, right? So to rise above that conventional approach to love and relationship, we actually need a metaphysical model um, to set free our wonderful loving souls. So I hope you got something from this. I absolutely welcome any and all questions that you may have. Again, you can find me at ColetteDavenport.com and I'll see you in the next lecture. Bye.